death be not proud. All right, you ignorant pigs, listen up. Put down your crack pipes and your beer bongs. It's time for painting with the Bane Man. Today on the channel, we are going to be painting a big boss in mega armor. And uh, this is a really badass model. You get him in the combat patrol box. I gave one to a buddy of mine because I know he needs one too. And uh, this is what's going to be leading my next army for the uh, next crusade that we're going to be doing. At the end of June or somewhere around there, they're going to expect me to burn all of my cards. And we're all going to have to start over, which is going to suck. But uh, I wanted to paint this guy on the video, and I've been waiting very patiently to do that. So um, the theme for my, for my army is Speed Freaks, even though I play goth. I just like the color red for orcs. It's, it's just very thematic. And uh, the things you're going to need uh, are... The, uh, let's just go through the paints, of course. So you're going to need Battlefield Brown. This is going to be the base for the reds. It's going to be the base for all your earth tones. The whole model is going to get dry brushed very lightly, Battlefield Brown. All right. Next up, you're going to want uh, Mephiston Red. Mephiston Red will be the base for your reds. The highlight for your red will be Evil Sun's Scarlet. And then finishing off in separate areas, we're going to be using a little bit of red ink. And then uh, for our orc flesh, we're going to be using Gnarls Green from the P3 range with a highlight of War Boss Green from the Citadel range. Now the Goblin, he'll also get an extra layer of Moot Green for his highlight. And then we're going to be washing all our greens with Bill Tan Wash. All right. Uh, the next color we're going to be using, the secondary color for the army is yellow and I'm using dark sun yellow as my foundation then I'm highlighting with Uriel yellow and I'm gonna finish that off with a mixture of Uriel yellow and some yellow ink uh, let's talk uh, trousers and leather so that's gonna be some other browns we're gonna need some snake bite leather his trousers are going to be bestial brown he's got some kind of a cloth down in front of him and uh, that's I've just decided to go ahead and uh, that's probably going to be black with a highlight of USAF dark gray then we're also going to need some codex gray and then for the base highlights itself we're going to be using vomit brown all right for our metallics we're going to be using Retributor armor and chainmail silver from the air color line. And as for uh, our bone colors, we're going to be using Zandri dust and Menoth white base. I think that's really good on teeth. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about real fast. Uh, oh, last color. Strong tone ink wash. The whole model is going to get washed in strong tone at the end of this to kind of tie it together. Uh, so one thing we're going to do is uh, we're always going to dry brush the model. So you always want a big flat dry brush like this, you know. So that you'll always see one of these in my in my uh, queue. Now I have a special paintbrush that I only bring out for orcs, and uh, that's my size six Windsor. This thing only paints orcs. That's why it's lasted so long. I only use it specifically to paint orcs. And it's got a fine it's got a fine tip on there, but what's going to be picking up most of the work is I bought a brand new Windsor watercolor professional. Now these watercolor brushes, they're not bad. They're not bad. Once they wear out, you actually get somewhat of a small dry brush with this, and that's also going to be picking up the load. Um, another thing I could use if I wanted to is a uh, Royal Six. So all of the brushes I'm going to be using on this project are really big. It's going to be a lot of broad brush strokes. Um, as for detail. We got a size one, and uh, we just got a zero. That's it. That's all the brushes I'm going to use, and uh, that's all the paints I'm going to use. Just keep it simple. So uh, we're gonna dry. We're gonna start dry brushing this thing, and we'll be back when I'm set up. Well, okay, we are back. So I am all ready. I'm just going to give my paints a little bit of a shake. It's always a British guy doing this stuff. Um, that's the biggest problem. They're all British guys. Um, like Duncan Rhodes. I, oh, I live in the UK. This is what I do for a living because I'm a member of the Londinian Trust Fund class. So we're just gonna get this stuff out and onto the and into an eggshell here. Now, one of the things you want to do 
is uh, I, I noticed there aren't a lot of videos out there where they where they go over dry brushing. And uh, I know that because a new guy that used to game with us before he joined the Navy, uh, he, he said they're all British dudes and they don't even talk about dry brushing. It's always airbrush or whatever, and that's just what he told me. So I want to go through the entirety of the, in, of the model here, and I just want to make sure that I get brown all over the model. Now, none of this matters. This will also provide a base for my leathers and everything, and I'm also going to do the base. But, you know, when you do a dry brush, you just you just kind of like uh, expose... I, I, I call it exposing detail. That's what I call it. I call it exposing detail. And, uh, yeah, we're going to get a little bit onto the gun, but not much, you know. And we're going to want that moon up there. And you want to wipe off a lot of it. You know, we're just exposing the detail of the model because uh, it, it'll also help your uh, yellow stick. Yellow will stick to brown. A lot of people don't know that. When you dry brush, uh, I, f I don't know what, Averland Sunset. And uh, if you use coppers and golds. So it's always a natural go-to when you're doing orcs and everything. You know, so... And I, I don't. I think that the art of dry brushing has been lost. It's always everything's very clean. It's contrasts, and you know, you just. It's got to be a sterile environment. Just so you know, I wiped down my table today. That was disgusting. What a complete slob I I turned out to be. I am not a clean artist. I'm not the maniac with my little clean table. <laughs> now I just come down here, and when I start painting. I, uh, I get the job done. Everything's a job. This is something that I enjoy doing. Um, not so much the, the 40k aspect, it's just that, you know, my buddy the Ranger, he's, he's busy working, and, you know, so I haven't been able to game with him historically as much as I'd like, and my other buddy, uh, my other buddy Anthony and his uh, brother and our group over there, we've just been going gangbusters with the 40k. And I'm not going to be shy with what I do with this brown. I just, you know, I just want you to, you see, if I if I feel I got too much, I can always wipe it off. I got this uh, uh, paint rag here, you know, and I'm just going to really just cover the entirety of the model. I want a thin coat all over. I'm also going to paint the base with this. I want to get a lot of that on my base. So this is kind of like the most important step, and I'm just going to prattle on about it. As for the Holy Diver show, I got to get out a... Uh, uh, I gotta get out a video, but I don't I don't want to do my 20th episode without the Ranger. I might want to do a live episode, maybe. You know, so it's... I don't know when I'm gonna release it. There's a Kings of War battle report from Tennessee that I gotta get done. And, uh, that's gonna be in the queue. Uh, pretty quick here. As a matter of fact, if you hear me... If you see a Kings of War battle report, and then you see me release a Kings of War battle report before this video came out, you know that I got to one or the other. They're also working me like an old shoe over at work. And I'm being a little sporadic, but it's okay. I just want to make sure that we get a good healthy, healthy brown on this. Because there's going to be a lot of red dry brushing that we're going to do. But this guy, he's pretty cool looking. If you miss somewhere, you can just go in. But you want this all over. You want this all over. And yes, I'm a barbarian. I touch my figure as I paint it. That's right. I've got my thumb on his base. I don't want the. Uh, I went. What, what is it? I. Uh, oh, there it is. I have to get some rubber bands for my 3D printed butt plug that I did not buy from Citadel. I should have invented this, copyrighted it, and then. Uh, what do you call it? Sued Games Workshop. That's what I should have done, and I probably would have lost in court. I'm like, well, we have a, we have a team of lawyers. See, and there's nothing you can do. That's all we. So all we do is we made a living of suing people because you're getting too close to our IPs and that's why we had to end fantasy and Tomb Kings because, you know, we can't copyright it and it's just not fair. We need our copyrights. You know, um, I, what's funny is when I think about, like, people in the UK and copyright infringement and how things should be in the public domain, it goes back to that case with uh, Bram Stoker's wife. Can't remember her name, but she was suing the people back in the 1900s who made the uh, Nosferatu, a symphony of horror movie. 
<laughs> and she just couldn't let it go. She could have made a lot of money. She, you know, this this was the first cult movie. This was the first bootleg movie. This was also technically the first horror movie. Um, th there had been like ten short horror movies made up until that point, and uh, they, th I think the brain sees things at about twenty-four frames per second. Uh, when you're filming and they had to bump it up they I think they were filming at 12 frames per second with the crank and there was a guy whose whole job it was to uh, basically watch you uh, and and your crank speed so imagine doing that two people to operate a camera one to watch the speed one to turn the crank it's kind of neat you know at a time when there was when it was thought that there were gonna be no limits to science and of course this was after World War one you know Everybody's depressed, and what do you do when you're depressed? You go to the movies. Except for you can't go to the movies anymore because there aren't any good movies. Uh, I do want to see Northman, though. So, you know, this is this is just such an important step that I just want people to kind of see how I do it. You know, because when you dry brush metals and everything and you, you start that phase of it, you know, I just, you know, I just want people to know not to be shy with their dry brush. But this is... Uh, probably the stopping point here it takes a second and you don't need to see everything that I do but you know you I just want you to see me attack the miniature with the dry brush because that that is the whole point of this you do want to have a healthy layer of brown on the model it, you just get it everywhere and there you go so that's our first step and uh, we'll be back So the next thing we are going to do is we're going to take our our Mephiston Red. Going to give all paints a little shake as the British guys would do. And we're going to dry brush that all over the armor and anything we want to be red. So for that we're going to use our Windsor Size 6 watercolor dry brush. As a matter of fact I might want to use something bigger but I think this one's going to work out just a little bit better. Simply because we're going to need a lot of it, you know, and you just got to completely go for this this step, you know, and you want to you want to stay clean while you do it, you know. The dry brush is your friend. You know, and I just yeah, we'll get in there. In fact, we'll go underneath the entirety of his arms and armpits. He'll start to look more and more like a big speed boss. Yeah, this guy, he's going to have a battalion of, uh, what do you call it, battle wagons that him and his boys are going to ride in. I'm going to be painting up a crap ton of Mega Nods next after this. So he's going to be going around in style. But I'm still going to be using the goth uh, rules. I'm not really concerned about the um, the splash over. Just making sure to get as much of the red on as I can. Because we're going to go up with different colors, we're going to make it different all the way around. We just need to make sure that the armor gets reddened. And we'll be back. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start to paint the gnarls green on the orc flesh and goblin flesh now that all the red is on there. Um, this is actually a really easy step, you know. So you just, what you want to do is you want to get a little bit of water onto your palette here and make it clean. Everything's clean and neat in Citadel land. Yes, it is. So oh. I was watching a VK Von Ketteringham a little bit today and I noticed it was raining over there. And I wonder... And I, I, I can hear the rain when I have my headphones on. I wonder how how often it's raining in the UK. Like all the time. Look in the UK, we got we got shitty cartoons, shitty weather, shitty food, 
Like, wh and we have to listen, and we have to watch shitty cartoons like The Hobbit and Watership Down. That's all we've got. <laughs> I'm filming this video in 4K today, so, so I hope you guys appreciate all that I'm doing for you. Uh, and if you know anything about 4K, it's expensive. It taxes the shit out of my my camera batteries. Now I have an AC-DC adapter for my cameras. Only trouble I have is um. Uh, what do you call it? For whatever reason, the camera turns itself off after 15 minutes, which isn't good. I actually really hate that, so I can't use it. Otherwise, I could just perpetually film, and I wouldn't have to do it in in uh in stops here. But I figured I'd just do one more step tonight because for, I don't know these videos for me are very hard to uh, very hard to film. You know, I always gotta. Put the work in. My shelf broke today. The shelf that my laptop, my laptop's right there. My shelf broke, and I had to put that back up. And hey, I I was surprised that I was actually in the studs of the wall. So you know, I used some screw anchors. I did the whole handyman thing today. Th that's some man shit right there. I took care of that after I whined about it for about 40 minutes. <laughs> on the phone. I'm like, I can't fix it. I can't. Uh, no. Oh god, I love this. I love this model. I wish he had a I wish they had a power claw variant. That kind of pisses me off that they only got one monopose choice for your war boss and it kind of sucks that he can only have the huge choppa. But you can give him uh the uh relic choppa which is which doubles his strength instead of just being plus 3. I really think that if you have a lower armor penetration on the Choppa, they should give you uh, a higher damage value. I think this guy swinging this thing uh, should be three damage flat. I think it, I think it's only two or something like that. Maybe four damage flat. You know, if you got that low armor penetration, it's funny to watch people fail three plus armor saves. You know you. Me and my friend Anthony are going to be getting into 30k. I got a whole ton of Imperial Fist Terminators, 30 strong. This is going to be—that's going to be my "I'm so rich I can afford to play this game and you can't" peasant. <laughs> because gas prices are like four dollars and sixty cents now, and I'm like, whoa. Good thing I bought oil stock. Good thing I bought oil stock. You see, the problem is it, European countries. Well, we won't tell our environmental groups to shut the bleep up and give us our, give us our oil. You know, we 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 have to we have to eliminate everything. And here we won't do the same thing either. We won't tell our environmentalist groups to shut up and just start drilling like crazy. You got to go gangbusters. Oh yeah. So the Gretchen, he's gonna get his green. I'll do it in this phase. And this is just one of those detail phases that you got to do, but you got to do both greens because you got to highlight the red afterwards and stuff. But I do like this little guy on top, his little helper. Every every orc boss should have a little helper, you know, somebody to polish his big boots and call him Big Boss Ironsides. Lord Ironsides. Yeah, that's a, that's gonna be this guy's name. Oh yeah, hell yeah. So, that's just the green phase. We'll be back. So you can see he's kind of like all uh, done up with his green. And um, the next color we're going to do, it's, it's the next very next shade of green up. So, this is kind of where we're going to stop though. Um, War Boss Green. And we'll be done with greens for a little while. No, I did not shake that. This one is very... I use this color all the time because I'm an orc player, and let's face it, I got orcs I gotta paint. All the time. All the time, so I never need to thin this color because I always keep it thin. This one is one that gets into the... gets the Windex on its skin or else it gets the hose again. I'm actually staying in frame for this one. You people are in for a treat. It's okay if you get it on the teeth. 
because we got to paint the mouth brown anyway. But yeah, there's... Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of this model, but then again, I'm not a fan of this model, mostly because of the way that it is, you know, it's it's kind of hard. I, I, I wouldn't want to, I, I wonder if you'd have to sprue paint it and everything. Hmm. Let's see, this brush is too wet. Too wet, we'll switch to our one. Just the parts that you can see. It's okay if you leave a little bit of dark green showing, but you do want to make sure you get it in there. And Don't worry about the armor. Don't worry about the armor. You can always touch it up later. A lot of angles on this guy. But, oh boy, is he going to be worth it. It's going to be cool having a different war boss for a change. Put a little bit in there. We'll go behind him. You can see a little bit of flesh in there. And you don't really... Going inside right there, you don't really need to worry too much about it. I didn't undercoat it. I'm just going to make sure that i got a thick, healthy green on there. Because the wash is going to get into the recesses. We're actually going to wash it with the green. But we are going to kind of second coat these guys. Let's get a little bit onto his 26 inch big biceps. That's what I like about orcs. They're all buff, gnarly killers. And uh, we'll be back as soon as we're done with this step. So the next thing I'm going to do with this model is I am going to take care of its wash step for the green and I'm just going to use my size 0 for that because I don't have a lot of uh, flesh showing and I just want to make sure it pulls on the green itself uh, to kind of give that orc flesh tone uh, the shade that I normally prefer. I always apply a heavy coat of green wash. My orcs are always a dark uh, war boss green. Yeah, war bo they're always a dark war boss green. So they get painted war boss green, then I re-highlight them with the war boss green. So I just want to make sure that gets on there. I always kind of, always kind of hit it while the while the paint that I just put on is still drying just a little bit because I want it to kind of dry together and really give it that that green skin green that I've known for, for it, because all my orcs are I've been painting them ever since uh, the savages came out the new savage boys get well it's not new anymore but when they came out with the plastic savage boys this is kind of what I developed when those guys came out and I painted a lot of savage boys in fact, I don't know why I stopped. I think all I should do is just paint green skins. I have a channel about painting all the green skins because I am a green skin nut job. Uh, Ranger says I, sh I should give it up. I should just give it up. 40k is for the autistic kids. I can't give up my green skins. I can't. As much as I love the Ranger, I can't give up the green skins. Because I think orc, therefore I am. Let's see. This little guy needs it. He's going to need it. A lot of it. But I could really control the flow with this little brush here. I just need to get into a few places. Plus, if I make any mistakes, now that the flesh is washed, it'll be way easier to fix. Way easier to fix. All right, we'll be back. So there's one of two ways I can go with this next step. I can go uh, leathers or metallics. I've chosen to go to metallics. I'm just gonna go to my first metallic, which is the Retributor color. And um, 
Uh, this is really just going to be a dry brush for a lot of places. Like, uh, I was thinking these exhaust pipes right here, they could all be just be Retributor. And um, we're just going to quickly wick this on. Because maybe the backpack itself that powers the Mega Armor, it can uh, it could be silver over here, you know, so. The, and then you've got all the little hydraulics like this little piston there and everything that you gotta you gotta do up and everything so I just figured you hurry up and you do the retributor gold on the exhaust thing and any part that you want to be gold I mean this guy's big pimp and he's a rich orc I mean the richest orcs can afford the mega the mega armor I guess it's a more prevalent thing in the uh, Bad moons, even though bad moons are really known for their shooting, that are usually, and everybody likes their shock attack guns. But yeah, that's the step we're doing now. We're just going to do the retributor gold on the exhaust pipes, and um, yeah, I think we'll do both ends of this backpack with that retributor. So here, here, because these are part of the exhaust pipes, just to break up having too much steel. Now you can do steel if you want to save time. Just do all chain mail. Just do all chain mail. Pick one metallic chain mail. It's done. Easy. You know, because I've got other projects I've got to get to. I've got twelve mega knobs I've got to paint and then I've got my chaos stuff. I've got I've got twenty cultists and a hell drake I've got to get to because I'm started uh iron warriors. So because I want to play chaos too and let's face it, chaos have all the fun. Actually, uh, my first army was word bearers. That's so freaking long ago, I could barely remember. Barely remember. That was my first 40k army, word bearers. And then um, my next 40k army was salamanders. Uh, that was my next 40k army, I believe. No, it was death guard. Then I think... Death Guard, then it was, uh, it was Salamanders, yeah. Then I did a couple commissions, I painted up some guy's Necrons. That wasn't, that wasn't a fun commission at all. Um, gluing those rods in was not fun. And then it was Salamanders. It was Salamanders for a while, and then I started playing Orcs. Back when they got their new 5th edition book, all nice and shiny. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply my chain mail. I'm just going to get a liberal amount in my palette here. And uh, this is probably the one of the more time... Of course it's clogged. When is it ever not clogged? Nothing ever goes smoothly when I make these videos. Anywhere we want it to be metal. Let's, uh, let's start with the saw blades. Big giant saw blades, actually. Coming to you live in 4K. The most egregiously angled model I've ever seen. Yeah, that's the one hard part about doing these kinds of videos is that you gotta do them amid constant interruption, constant battery charging, gratuitous. It's all gratuitous. You huge chopper. What a weapon this guy's carrying. Actually can't wait to see him out on the field. You can just see how quickly that stuff just goes onto the model. I mean, it's no—it's a no fuss, real easy metallic to use. I like it a lot more than a uh, bolt gun metal or uh, lead belcher metal. Just—it just works. You don't need a lot. You just have, just have to go for it. And I like colors that you just have to kind of go for. Effortless. So I want my painting to be as effortless as possible. Um, and I said I was going to paint this whole thing right here metal. It's okay if we get it on the gold. Um, make the part of the totem all metal. Especially these, the fist down here is actually going to be, uh, we're going to make the fist yellow. Big yellow fist because yellow is the secondary color. 
but we will be back as soon as we're done applying the leather, the uh, metal. So here I am a week later because they work me like an old shoe at work. The next, the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, my uh, yellow here, and I'm just going to uh, what, what, what color is that? ID and du Dark Sun's yellow, and I'm going to uh, paint the yellow on this model because uh, that's just the next step. And then I'm also going to do the leather, any parts that's going to be leather. And the the reason for this being is that. Uh, we're going to skip ahead just a little bit because all of the colors i got to put on, he's got to go in a lot of different angles and it's not really conducive to making a, a tutorial video and everything. So we're just going to paint the er everything that I want yellow, I'm going to get yellow. And uh, that that's the next step. Ah, damn. You get so tired between boxing, working, lifting weights, and then... I want to do hobby time and I just don't have the energy. I don't have the energy. I can sit there on my ass and that's just not me. That's just not me. So like right I came in here and I painted some of these cords yellow and everything and I wanted and I made and I painted some other cords to be black. I don't know how well you can see that, but I am broadcasting in 4K, so that's a step up. So yeah, that's a lot of uh that's a lot of whipping the model around and everything. We're just going to clean up some lines on the yellow. Of course, I do it after boxing. I've got the shakes. And you don't need to worry about it too much in there because people aren't going to be able to see these. People aren't going to be able to see a lot of these, but you do want it to be a nice, clean, solid line as best that you can get it because all you have to do is touch it with a brighter yellow to highlight it you can't even see what I'm doing so with that step done we're gonna go ahead and do the leather with a uh, snake bite and we'll jump ahead so I am also going to use the leather to uh, bring out the teeth and the toenails and the claws of these guys because I want I want that to be the base for my bone. As you can see, I've gone down the shaft of his weapon and everything, and I'm just cleaning that up. I'm, you might call this just a second coat of paint. I have so much that i got to do. I'm glad I already cleaned the house. I have to go pick up a new set of Turtle Beach headphones. These ones are okay still, but they don't stay on my head the way I'd like them to. It's time, you know, so i got to whip this guy around, get in here, do his fingernails real quick. You know, just the parts of them that I can see. Because what you can't see, your opponent can't see, and you don't have to paint. I mean, it doesn't need to be perfect. A war boss is sel seldom is. But, uh, yeah, we'll go inside the Grot's mouth just a little bit. You can kind of see his teeth. So we'll put a layer on there. And I'm just doing this with my uh, size 1. we got to go do his little toenails quite a nice little because what we are going to do is we're going to wash the entirety of the model with uh, with strong tone ink and so now that that's done we're gonna switch and we're gonna clean up our metallics alright so the next step here I got some metal into the eggshell and I've also got some gold out we're just gonna make sure that our metallics are kinda clean so like or anywhere that we missed I noticed that I missed right here on the handle of the weapon that he's holding so we're just going to make sure that that's silver. Bestial Brown is the color I've chosen for the pants. Now, I have an entire unit of 20 boys that have Bestial Brown as their pants color. So in my last orc army, I, didn't, I, I made every orc the same. And I painted them as quickly as possible. But this time around, and this was, that was over like 12 years ago when I painted that army. This time around... Um, could have been actually 15 years ago. I'm not. I, I don't really remember. I think I painted orcs up at the end of fifth edition. So yeah, that's a long, long time ago. And uh, so this time around, I uh, just to keep uh, keep me honest, uh, the way I tell my units apart is by guns and pants color. So I've got a unit with gray pants, and then I've got another unit that has gray pants, but their guns are yellow. 
so th so that uh, they all have yellow on their guns, so that I know that uh, they're a, they can be used as a different unit or one unit. I have a unit with straight black for pants and everything, and then I have a unit with uh, yeah, just straight black, and they're 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 a unit of 20, 20 strong. And I'm going to be highlighting this with a little bit of a mixture of uh, snake bite on the final highlight and everything. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, we're just going to go in and we're going to get the pants. And then we have to go to boots. So the next color we're going to do is uh, we're going to do this loincloth thing. I've decided to do that in black along with his boots. And, uh, you know, you just you just go for it. And good thing about the air color black is it, it's a glider paint. It just goes on so smooth. No fuss. It's so much better than Abaddon. Abaddon sucks. Some Citadel colors are good, some are bad. It's all a... Painting is about finding a mixture of paints, finding a collection of paints that just work. That's what it is. You want your paints to just work. You know, so... And I've got a lot of stuff i got to get through in the next couple of months. It's just going to be hard because I'm always boxing or I'm always working. I mean, reluctantly, I've been forced to work 50 hours the last four weeks. Very reluctantly. This week, I got off uh, I got off a little lighter. I think I'm at about 45. Thank, thank the Almighty for that. But I'm also studying my Japanese. You know, Kadoi dis. I got that's the color I'm using now. Betsuno Iroa Arimaska. Do you have it in a different color? So we're just going to make this loincloth black. I haven't decided what I'm going to do down here on this base. I'm probably just going to paint that portion of it metal. Um, and I also haven't decided on any freehand. Seeing as how I'm limited on time and my friend is... Pr I'm going to my friends to play 40k tomorrow and I'm going to have a shit ton of Mega Knobs come back. I think I'm going to take the path of least resistance on him. Now that the black is on, we're going to mix it in with a little bit of uh, USAF dark gray. And then uh, that'll kind of bring it home. So now that I did the uh, black on the loincloth and uh, the black on the boots and everything, I don't know how well you'll see that in there. I'm just going to hurry up and take a little codex gray. And then I'm going to um, uh, highlight that black just a little bit and we're going to dip that in the USAF and make sure that we get something kind of dark. And I think that will work. And this will, yeah, just a little bit of a line on the raised parts, nothing special. We all know how to highlight black. I know you know how. I know, th I know that you know how to highlight black. <laughs> and then we're not even going to worry about the boots because they're just so far in there, you know. But if we wanted to, we could touch it just a little bit because you can't see what I'm doing. I see it, but you don't. All right. All right. That's a step done. I just kind of keep these colors at the ready as best I can. Next up, uh, we're going to skip Xandri Dust. I know I said I'd use it, but it doesn't look like I need to because there's not a whole lot of tooth. We're just going to go right to Menoth on this. And we're going to start doing all the bones, the tooth and nail. As a matter of fact, we will need a little bit of Xandri dust, so let's just do that now. I forgot that this guy has a couple of teeth hanging on the back of his banner. So we're just going to hurry up and dot those real quick and keep that out. And that Menoth looks like it could use a little bit of a shake. It doesn't shut all the way, so we'll have to be careful. Just a little bit of a shake. I keep the Menoth very, very, very wet. But yeah, the Xandri down here. Boom. And anywhere else you find teeth that are near the that isn't really initially on the model that just need a base coat real quick. There we go. And again, what you can't see, you don't have to paint. And even then, you still the the whole problem with Citadel models for me at least, is that they are a vert they are just an utter rondo of detail. You know, every 
I'm just gonna hurry up and make that armband on the grot black. That way it's colored. You know, and you just you miss things, you miss things, you miss things. That's all you do. It's not like painting a historical model where it's going to be the same, it's going to be the same. It's going to be the same. It's not really pushing your limit. It uh, a as a painter, what it does to me is it just pushes my patience button. I lose patience really quick. So, and that's why I kept... I mean, I am starting another 40k army, but this is... Th that's a little different. I'm doing it so that I have a little bit of variety. So that I can be the bad guy just a little bit more. And, what, of course, if you get any on the uh, red, you'll have to clean it up. But you go through, you paint the toenails of the grot. You paint the tooth of the orc because everything is going to get washed um, black, and we're, we are going to keep that off the skin. So we are going to keep it off the orc flesh. You'll be doing this on his uh, fingernails as well, his claws. Orc's got claws. I certainly wouldn't want to be grabbed with one of those things. Orcs are terrifying. Orcs are terrifying. We're going to have to use a little brush for that, so we'll go over here and we'll get his toesy woesies. There. Alright. Underneath, we'll go for his fingernails. We might only have to do the thumb. And not something you can see. Except for like at one angle. Of course, you're scratching the paint off the face. So, come on. So here's the model so far. Uh, you want to kind of give it the final once over before you give it the wash and everything, and because we're going to be washing the armor with uh, everything's going to get washed in strong tone except for the orc flesh, and then you're going to be highlighting the red with a little bit of ink and uh, evil suns, and then you might think about freehand or something like that. So you just give it a once over and everything you know and I mean there's a thing down there I could paint that but I'm not going to you know and just kinda make sure that your details are very clean you know just clean they don't need to be perfect they just need to be clean like down here this little hose that I decided to make yellow make sure that that's yellow down here make sure that this is yellow so that your col you, you want your colors to be very solid before you apply the wash. Um, and inspect this hand again. Yeah, nobody's going to be able to see once I wash it, so that's fine there. And so we're going to go on to our wash, and this is probably going to require a lot of wash. And uh, so we're going to give this a little shake. I always like to put a BB inside of the uh, strong tone, soft tone, and dark tone. Really makes it a lot better. Um, so one, two, three. All right? I always go one, two, three, and for every three drops, I add a drop of water. And I ha I have a feeling that I'm going to need probably fifteen drops. So one our royal and then you could just test it see what it's gonna look like yeah I think that'll work we'll add an extra drop just in case Boom. you want it to be kinda dark this is a very important step that you're doing so we're just gonna start on the arms and the weapon here we're going to just work over the entire model. This is why you kind of need a lot of it. So the metallics, the gun, you know. So for those of you who want to know, this guy sucked down roughly 26 drops of uh, wash. And now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of go through and this will also help me see where I've screwed up. I can take a big old ring of red there, but... The, I mean, red is kind of one of the last colors that we're going to do. We got to, uh, I mean, I made sure it got it in the mouth. I got it all over this model. And I just want to make sure that it's not going to pull up. If it pulls up in here in the recesses, that's fine. It's going to be dark there anyway. And uh, I'm only going to be highlighting that yellow with the 
a little bit of ink and a little bit of a uh, Uriel yellow. So you know, yellow always being the secondary color, and I, I think for the purposes of time, I'm not going to do very, uh, any freehand on this guy because I just I want this boss on the table. Uh, the Mega Knobs might be a different story. I might only be able to produce six of them because I only really need six. I don't know if I'm going to run 18 of those bad boys in a li in a single list. There's other things that I know that I need. You know, and I just want to make sure that you get it all over this axe. All right, so the next step is uh, we're going to highlight the red finally, and we're just going to use uh, Evil Sun Scarlet and a little bit of the Formula P3 red ink. I've already put it in my palette. I've got a drop of fresh water right there, and I'm just going to kind of give the edges of the metal a rub. And uh, this this will be for battle damage wherever I feel like it can go or something. And I'll, I will use actually a different metallic color for the battle damage. But I want this red to kind of go on uh, very smoothly. And this is actually a really easy step. Just kind of... It, the, the ink kind of makes your red look a little bit more metallic when you're on the highlight phase. You know, so... And just really do it on those big surfaces. You don't really need to do it all over the, uh, all over the recesses and everything. This is, this is just really too. Like if I was gonna freehand something up here, you know, I wouldn't bother with it. I'd freehand it first and then highlight it. But since I'm not doing any freehand on him, and he's just kind of cool the way he is, I'm just going to keep going around. Okay, so skipping ahead to the yellow now. I got the Uriel yellow, I've got the ink, I have the fresh water, and I mix it somewhere in between. And I just kind of, this is kind of like a wash to the yellow. This is what's going to highlight my yellow, kind of seal the yellow on there, make it look nice and uh, bright for Speed Freaks. I would also recommend this mixture on Bad Moons as well, the uh, Dark Sun yellow, and then uh, bringing up the yellow with the ink to make it look more metallic on their helmets and everything because that's all you really need to do if you're doing a uh, Bad Moon's Orcs, you know, you just need to make their uh, Yellow and you see what that does it just insta sticks You know so yellow ain't no problem. I, you can also use this on crimson fists, but I think they'd be a little too yellow You know so you might want to take it down a notch we're just going to go across each surface, and you want to just make sure you're doing one stroke. One stroke per surface, because you don't want to have the brush marks in this. That's very easy to see. And you just refer to your mixture every time. You don't want to... So you just kind of just... You let, you let it set on there. You let it set on there. Boom. Because nothing orcs do is clean. But I want the yellow to be bright, and I want it to be somewhat dirty. And we might have to apply a second coat. And we want to bring it out of the recesses just a little bit if we get too much in the fist there itself. And then you can go around and you can highlight the um, yellow with a little bit of metal. We might have to put a little ink on it. But anyway, that's, that's the yellow. So now that I've kind of gone around and done the yellow on him. That's dried off enough up there on that giant fist that I do want to take a little bit of water. I do want to take a little bit of ink. And I just want to ink it a little bit. All right. And I might have too much. You don't want too much. You just want some. You want to... Because this is really more or less an ink wash on the yellow. And that's what I'm doing. And I'm just going to go through each fist let it settle in there you want to just make sure that that's pretty bright up front kind of like I think that's about perfect let's get just a little bit more and we'll do the rear end of that everything else you know like the cords it's just one little highlight so all the cords inside there I just did one little one little line that's it you know so they're predominantly the dark suns I'm not worrying too much about what they look like I just kind of made sure that was pretty yellow so that's a prominent feature. But on the fist here, I want it to be bright yellow because the yellow is the secondary color in my tribe. And uh, it's also a secondary Speed Freaks color. If I have to, I'll get a little bit of paint on it. 
just a little bit to help make it stick, you know, on the hot, on the edges. Boom. And I think that looks pretty good. Go up top just a little bit because we're going to do those uh, those little indents right there. They're going to be metal. All right, so I think we're done with the yellow step. The next step is uh, we've taken our war boss green and our moot green, and we're going to highlight his little buddy up top here. And uh, goblins, to me, are always just a little bit greener than their orc cousins, their orc counterparts. So, you know, you I want this guy to be a little bit brighter. Whereas, so this is mixed with the moot. And I'm really just going to kind of cheat this out here, as you can see. And uh, he's got that big bulbousy bald head and go all over his arms, the parts of the goblin that I can see here, towards his leather strap. And if I have to, I can wash this again if it gets too green, because he did get a little bit of the black wash on him, with a strong tone, I mean. So here we are. We're like 99% of the way done. We just got to do some highlighting and everything. I think I've picked out all the yellow and everything that I'm going to do. I've done the skin. He's all highlighted, as you can see. He really looks like one of my boys now. So I've gotten some metal on my palette. We are going to take our size two, and we're going to chip them up a little bit. We're going to like wipe most of that off, and I think that'll work. And we're where we're going to start with some of the battle damage is just down here towards the feet a little bit. All right, we're going to chip up his feet just a little bit. And this is really more or less a dry brush, you know, because the feet aren't going to be neat. And let, let's just face it, he's kicking things all the time. And you just really want to just kind of put that on heavy edges. All right, and you see what that does to the, you see, you see that? The ink kind of brings out the metal just a little bit. I used to paint Chaos Chosen this way a lot, you know, depending on their mark and what color they would be. It's an old trick I learned back in the day. This is how I battle damage up the Chaos Chosen armor. I'm going to do that towards the fists because I have a feeling he'd be punching other boys. He'd be punching everything. I'm going to do it a little bit to his gob here. Just a little bit. You, you do as much battle damage as you want on these guys. You know, but I, I prefer just a little bit. Just a little bit. Nothing nothing spectacular. You know, just a, a little bit of battle damage. I don't want to interfere too much with the red. You know. Do his heels. Just dry brush the heels a little bit. You know, just a little. And a little goes a long way. I mean, you see in the light how well that catches. We're gonna chip up his axe just a little bit, um, or we don't have to. You know, we we can chip up the axe near the edges of it, where he's been swinging the thing. You know, and this is just a real light dry brush, and you can see what that does. It really catches. You know, you don't need a lot. I like a clean red on my guys, but you know, we're gonna give him just a little bit of. Just a little bit of battle damage. We're going to wipe it off again. And I'm going to put a little bit right here. And a little bit going across the top right there. And I think we are going to put just a little bit right there and there. And I think that's pretty good. Maybe a little there. A little more on his fist there. And I think he's done. We're going to finish off the base here. And uh, with that, we're going to take him out of the butt plug, the 3D printed Games Workshop butt plug. And uh, get out our Battlefield Brown and make sure that uh, we we just kind of touch it up. And we can use our, uh, our Windsor size 4 for that. And, you know, the funny thing is, I thought I'd be using my new size 6 on this guy and it he was just a series of dry brushes um, that was it I didn't have to break out my special orc brush I might on my mega knobs I'll have two different brushes going but yeah I fucking chipped up the paint right there like an idiot so we're gonna make that nice and neat again I twisted them inside the goddamn thing the butt plug 
destroyed my my pro ring. And now I'm being a barbarian touching the model, but he's already been sealed up by wash. He's already been sealed up by a little bit of ink. So it doesn't really matter. I just got to get the red off of there and we'll be going to our last color. And you want to dry brush this on. You don't want any, you don't want a lot of moisture on your brush when you do this because you want to be able to go right into that base highlight phase. And you just, anywhere you got red on the dirt, You can just keep that brown, keep that brown. All right, we'll be going to the last phase in a second. So last but not least, we're going to use good old Vomit Brown, and this is Bubonic Brown in uh, the game color range. I've just been filling up the old pots. That's, I, I, like the, I wish the pots for Games Workshop colors still looked like this. Very easy to clean. They were manageable. Now they're just like shit pots. And um, I think they're coming out with... With uh, drop with droppers, I don't know yet. I think they are. Everything's going to come in a drop pot, and then they're going. You're going to get less paint. And you're going to pay more money for it. Yay, Games Workshop! Eh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And if I want to bring, and if I think that this is too yellow, I can always bring it down with a very thin shade of sepia. But I don't think that it is. And this is really just, by and large, the easiest part of the model right here. We're just going to drag it across the rocks or the sand. And I do this. I, I do this wasteland for a lot of my armies. Be, uh, my English Parliament has this wasteland, and uh, a lot of my orcs for fantasy and goblins have this wasteland color. This is just really efficient, effective. Looks good. If you want to, you can bring it up with a little bit of bone. Put a little bit on the metal, just a little bit. And drag it across the feet just a little bit too. You know. A little bit on the heel, a little bit there, boom. Nothing spectacular. And now, we'll do the fun part. Big Boss Ironsides is 99.999% complete. Take a little PVA glue. That ought to do us, boom. box here. Now the last thing we need before we do this step is we need to clear all this garbage over there. Alright, get over there. Get over there. Last thing we need before this step is our Bic. There's my big arm in there. Okay. You gotta be able to flick your Bic on this. It's the best way to get that stuff off. So with this stuff, I always keep it really thin. When I buy a new thing, I just pour water in there. I, I, I take it to the faucet immediately. And we're gonna do that. Boom. I might even put a plant on his base, I haven't decided. But we want to just put grass wherever we didn't get enough dirt. And there you go. The Mega Boss is ready for battle. Nothing spectacular, quick, easy paint job. Very efficient. And um, I hope you got something out of this video. I might do one for the Mega Knobs, but this guy was kind of the prototype. Hold on. He was kind of the prototype for the Mega Knobs, uh, because I haven't painted Mega Knobs for a while. And I'm going to be painting 12 of them, and then I'm going to do 5 Flash Gits. And then there's some other things for my armies, like I need, uh, what do you call it, some other models. And uh, then I'll round off my Orc collection and be done. And then I can collect uh, about 200 power worth of Iron Warriors, and buff out my Imperial Fist for 30k. So there you have it, Internet, a tutorial on how to paint a Mega Boss. I really hope this helps you. I want to do a lot more tutorials. It's just that, again, time constraints. So it's like I can't get better at the tutorials because I'm not doing the tutorials. So I'm always going to be like shaking my figure everywhere. I can't make a Holy Diver show this month because I have nothing written because I haven't had time to write anything down uh, amidst all the boxing and everything else that's going on. And then, um, uh, that's about it. The reason why I'm doing so much Games Workshops oriented stuff is because me and a buddy are just, we're just going gangbusters. Me and my buddy Anthony are going ham. Uh, he's painting up his world leaders and his, uh, night lords. I'm going to be painting up my, uh, my iron warriors, my imperial fists, and my orcs to flush out forces. And that's just what we're doing right now. 
Uh, the Ranger's very, very busy, so I haven't heard from him a lot. All I know is that uh, Northrop Grumman is cracking the whip on his back, and then if it's not the whip on his back from work, it's the lash of his uh, woman making him do domestic chores. Sounds like he had better find his pimp hand pretty soon. So anyway, as you know, YouTube has many features you can use to interact with me. But until I see you again, I'll be back with a Holy Diver show in June, episode number 20. If anybody has some good themes, put them in the comment section below. And until I see you, keep painting and stay metal, my friend. Even you, puppy dog. Hey, you need to grow a sack!